All right. This deserved the regular music? I don't know. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, we've got to do like the Rocky theme, I think. <laughs> all right, all right. It is the final countdown, the showdown. Mm -hmm. This is exciting. All right, so there's two things here. We're doing this yep. live, so you hear it real. Uh, we're almost going to do like a produced episode of LED Showdown. Yeah. It'd probably be a little bit more entertaining, but it'd be less uh, real. Yeah. So you get our real thoughts. Hey, I was just I was just saying that. I mean, the only other way you're going to get this information that we're about to share. This is only part one of part four, of four parts, but we are going through like 20 different lights. You can go watch 20 Investigates videos if you want to, to and compare all the data yourself. We're giving it all to you right here. Actually, I often think of the data that you're producing as the only real purpose is so that we can refer back to and condense it down for this format. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? Uh, <laughs> so uh, here's the deal, guys. Uh, we're doing LED showdown. We're going to do 20 lights. We are going to tell you what we like about them, what we yeah. don't like about them. We're going to rate them. Uh, we're going to surprise rate them, too. We're going we're to throw out numbers. Adam's back here tallying up the numbers, and we're, we're, we don't know what we're going to rate them yet. And the number one thing that we normally never ever do, which yeah. is like, you know, rate this light against this light against another light. Uh, we always talk about them on their own merits. Yeah. Garbage. We're gonna actually talk about them this time, like uh, in reference to each other <laughs> and how I would use these things and which one's better than another one. And you guys are all gonna say, no way, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, I don't care. Uh, so <laughs> we're gonna give it to you raw. We're gonna give it to the way we believe. We spent a last year looking at this. I don't think there's anybody out there. No. Zero. I, actually, I, I don't Zero. say definitive stuff like this. This is for sure. I don't think there's any two people that have spent more hands-on experience with all of the available lights <laughs> out there than us two in the last year, and for actually sure. the whole team here. And we're just going to give you everything we got. Awesome. All right. Let's get into so, it. So these are the things that you can expect to see rated on every single one of these lights that we uh, share. Six categories. First one is price per par. Right? This is interesting. Like, I don't think anybody's ever broke down cost per par because there hasn't been like a, an even keel for to judge them on. We've got that number. Yeah. So for you guys, what you have often said, well, how much par does it do? I don't know. You know, but, par wars. Yeah, uh, like par wars. But here's the thing, man, is we need to think about it in terms of how much does each one of those par cost essentially. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna take the average par at six inches, uh, and it'll be 300 par. We'll divide it by the cost, and we'll get the price per par, yep. which will give you the relevance of the strength of the light for the dollar spent. If that's the only thing you care about, you can actually just wait until uh, episode four and see the, mo the cheapest one. <laughs> that's All right. right. All right, but for me, uh, it's par is not the only reason that I would buy a light. I think a lot no. of you will agree. There's a purpose. All right, so spread. Mm -hmm. So now we've covered how the light will actually come out. Spread is actually how we distribute that light. Yeah, and, and we test like all of the lights that we're going to talk about in these four episodes. We tested at six inches. Then we found their optimal mounting height. Now you get a, like one resource to look at them all. Yeah, not only the optimal height, but how does it actually perform at that optimal yeah, mounting height? Because one of them is not better than the, or one of them is definitely better than the other one. Yes. Uh, all right. So then. Spectrum, meaning quality of light, right? Yeah. I mean, we have this, you know, ATI T5 bulb comparison, the gold standard. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to see all the spectrums in one spot. All right, control. How you actually control that light? Uh, is it a phone app? Is it knobs? Is it uh, garbage? Is it a little uh, crappy remote? This is important know? to me. I like control. I like you know using my phone, but there's some out there that have different purposes. All right. So how you actually use that light? Mm. Mm, this one is actually interesting. Mounting options, right? Yeah. Yeah, and you're like, well, it's important. Well, well, well. Yeah, you know <laughs> like, what? How do Actually, you mount this versus that? I did a poll, like this was many years back. I mm -hmm. did a poll though and asked people like what the things that they most care about their lighting. Yeah. And mounting options actually came up as number one. That makes sense. Like I couldn't believe it. Of, of all the things, the people were, just wanted to be able to put it on top of the tank mm -hmm. easy. Mm -hmm. Like, well, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> uh, you know, I want to be able to use it, whatever it is. If if it's the best, I don't care if I can't get it on top of the tank yeah, in a reasonable fashion. Yeah, that's fact. true. So we'll talk about mounting options. And all of these things rated from uh, 0 to 10. 0 to 10. Yep. And we'll add them up. Adam's you know. going to add them up for us. All right. Then aesthetic appeal. This means two things to me. This means how it looks on the outside of the tank. Yes. Uh, this also means how it looks inside the tank, number one. Like Very way important. more important than oh, probably the sure. outside. Yeah. All right. So here's the thing. I don't know, some of you may just try to keep uh, corals and fish alive for the fun of it, but the reality is, is most of us want this thing to look epic in our homes. Yeah, it's a piece of art. It is a visual display that is enjoyed visually. Mm. So if you aren't counting how this thing makes uh, uh, corals and fish and the whole tank look, yeah. 
I think you're missing a big important part <laughs> yeah, of this thing. Because yeah. some are better than others, depending on your uh, desires. Dramatically so. Dramatically. All right. All right. So, uh, there we go. Do we have the... Oh, there it is. Boom. There it is. All right. So, number one. The... Uh, oh, we got the tiles up here. Okay. So, number one in terms of cost per fa par. This one is actually a fail right in the beginning. Uh, yeah. But is the Kessel T365. Let's show it. We're talking most expensive by cost per par in that uh, we can see the average par. This is six inch mounting height. You know, this is the T365 that we mounted at 48 inches off the top of the water. Don't know the cost, but we can tell you that it's pretty expensive. Okay, so here's the thing. I, I did have the cost for it, uh, and mm. uh, but it, it varies so much. I'm gonna tell you right now, yeah. it is by far the most expensive option out mm. there. Yeah. And it's because it comes on a track lighting and it, it, it's mounted for a very specific uh, purpose. But uh, you're gonna see that uh, it does some things uniquely well. So here's the thing, mm. is I'm gonna give this one right off the bat, a 0 0.5 on a 10 point scale, just okay. because we're dividing 20 put lights uh, up. We have 20 lights, this is the bottom light. Most expensive per par Four light cost per par. Uh, out there. Yeah. Uh, all right, so, however, let's look at it beyond just that. 0 0.5, okay. All right, so uh, looking at uh, the uh, spread next, right? Yes. So spread is how we distribute that light. Uh, how about some things that you might have liked about this one? So spread wise, here we're looking at the zoomed out. That means it's a wide, the widest beam because this is an adjustable for Nell lens. You got 162 in the center, 100 in the outside. That means the outside, it has 61% of the par in the center. That's a pretty good spread. Okay, so the part that might have missed here yeah. is this is spread at 30 inches off the tank. Shh. So yeah, that's right. Yeah. So here's the thing: is this thing actually spins out? Mm -hmm. uh, I forget how it's done. Uh, there, you go. there we go. Unloosen it here, and uh, it actually comes out. Oh gosh! All right. <laughs> there, there we go. There yeah, we go. Big ring. All right. So this thing actually spins out, yeah. and now it will shoot lights really, really, really far. Right. Yeah. So this is 30 inches off the top of the tank, shooting it down. And when I first saw it, I thought, well, you know what? This is going to spill light all over the room, <laughs> you know, but it doesn't. It actually focuses it right in there and it spreads it out pretty well. Yeah. However, if you spin this ring all the way out, now it goes even farther. Yeah, so a tighter window. So we're talking from a 30 some degree beam angle to a 12 degree beam angle, which we brought up to 48 inches. It's four feet off the top of your tank. Like nobody mounts lights as high. And here you see that the outside is, you know, of 26% of the center par. So not as wide even spread, but we're talking 48 inches off the top of the tank. So you might be wondering, why would anybody do that? Uh, pull up this photo. This is what this <laughs> looks like implemented. Yeah, this is This so cool. is right tool, right job. I got a tank in the middle of the room. Yeah. I want to be able to light it from the, so uh, from the ceiling. Uh, and I want to have minimal spill. You can see how much spill is on the floor. It isn't mm -hmm. all that much, right, in this photo. This is actually Kessel's lobby tank. And uh, it is for an industrial environment, but uh, right tool, right job. We have mastered the spread and we've got it into the tank from a mm. really difficult position, right? Well, I mean, so if you, you bring up that 12, deg uh, that 12 degree angle at 48 inches, uh, just a reference point here at uh, the next, yeah, this one. Just a reference point, we mounted the Kessel A360X at, an, uh, at 48 inches also. Mm -hmm. It lost 91% of its total average par. Uh, here, only 26% from six inches up to 48 inches. Okay, 90%. Right? That means so, all the lights are almost outside. Yeah, so if this was just a normal castle, the wide angle lens, you would have lost 90% of the light in this room. This thing focused it in 12 degree beam right into your tank. Yeah. So this is actually for me one of the coolest parts of the whole conversation, which is right tool, right job. And so this is what we liked about it. Uh, but uh, what could be improved? Well, I mean, the, there is an efficiency loss when you raise the light up. When you raise any light up, there's an efficiency loss. So some light does spill out of the room the higher you go. Uh, this wasn't as bad because it's a difference of like 91% for a light that's made to go at eight inches versus, you know, 26% four feet off the tank, uh, but you, maybe we could find a way to keep more of that in the tank. Okay, so knowing what this was built for, which is going on the ceiling, coming four feet down, it's doing uh, an awesome most job. of you people wouldn't do that. Uh, I don't think you can do a, a lot better than this thing did it. So, in that spirit, zero to 10. Uh, because of its a unique ability, I'd say I, I'm giving it 10. Like, no, no other light does this. No I, other I'm light. I'm compelled. Uh, I, I don't know, <laughs> I'm gonna have to give it a 10 in that instance too. 
for its purpose. Yes. For most of you, it would probably be zero because you're going to put it at eight inches over your tank. But nothing. if you're going to do four feet for what it was intended for, I haven't seen anything. I haven't even seen anything marketed to do the same thing. No. So no. there you go. All right. So the Spectrum, actually, in your investigates here, yeah, we so didn't test the Spectrum. We on. took a different approach when we tested the T365, and that was just to testing, like, can you change the beam angle to raise them higher? The answer was yes, 10 out of 10 reef certainty. So we didn't test the, the Spectrum, but I would imagine it's similar to, like, the uh, Tuna Blue uh, A360, mm -hmm. somewhere in that range. It's got yeah, two noms. I'm just going to give it a five in Spectrum because I know it achieved that at least. It's probably closer to eight or nine. Yeah, I'm a five, too. All right, so uh, on control, this one was actually interesting. Uh, so how you control this guy right here, uh, if most of you know uh, Kessels, but this one's a little different. Yeah, this one, much like those that you you know your standard Kessel, you have a color knob and you have an intensity knob. So onboard controls, I like onboard controls when I don't have to have my phone around. And uh, it does have you know this track lighting that provides it power and you can control through that like track. So multiple lights at the same time. Uh, what hey I Dave, do you remember the, day, the name of that box they gave us? What kind of box is that called? He'll figure it He'll out. He'll find it. Uh, so, you know, I do like that it has onboard controls, except for this is four feet off the, off the top of the water. Like, I'm not mm -hmm. going to climb a ladder and adjust it. Uh, you know, I'm also, I do have that separate box that's, you know, offset from my, all my lights. And it's kind of manual control. I bet, you know, Felix has a whole bunch of other different type of control options. for. But for what we had in this purpose, yeah, control-wise, I'm going to have to give it, like, a four. Because I like... If it's way up there, I need to like not have uh, manual access to it. I'm not really into phone apps either, yeah. uh, or myself, but uh, for me, yeah, I definitely would want it if it was mounted on the ceiling. So I like the little knobs. I'm not going to use them if it's on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would love to see a phone app. DMX. It's called a DMX board that ah, you control you it with. Yep. So, uh, but uh, the cord, if it's brought down into like a fish room or something, and you can control it with that, I guess I would. Yeah, maybe. Uh, what do you give it for a rating? Uh, I'm gonna go four two. A four. Four point right. two. Okay, four point two. Uh, Adam, there you go, we're Adam. Going to, we're gonna go into <laughs> decimals now. He's average. All right. Uh, so mounting options. Uh, the only mounting options you have is that track lighting. So again, maybe you could pull that up. You can see that track up in the ceiling there. Yeah. They all install in there. So so uh, that is your only option, has to go on the ceiling. Uh, there are some things that I like about that in the fact that it looks really slick in an industrial environment like an office. I mean, just like that, like you said, industrial environment, even like uh, ceiling or like mounted lights in this big giant lobby of a business or what have you, like there's a special, a special purpose for this and a use for this. So, you know, in that essence and that it's four feet off the tank, I never have to worry about lights being in my way. Um, yeah, I do like that feature, but I also would like it if, you know, if there was, uh, oh, what did we say here? Uh, there was one, uh, the recessed cans. Like if I could put this thing in the ceiling and it'd be just and disappear completely, ah, big win. But it's not there that yet. That was every conversation we had. Actually, <laughs> that was true. So for those who don't know, if you follow probably my Facebook, you may have seen this already. But yep. I considered this on the 360 for a little while. I'm like, man, the idea of having the lights three feet or four feet off of the tank, don't even see the lights. I'm never in my way. Yeah. Uh, they're blended perfectly because it's so far up. Uh, there's a lot of reasons it was really attractive to mm. me. But in the end, I just couldn't have all these barn doors and stuff in my room, in yeah. my living room. I just wasn't there. But every conversation we had is, if Kessel took this thing and put it in a recessed can in your ceiling, <laughs> uh, and so you wouldn't see it from the sides because uh, like uh, the, the can would block the light. It's coming out 12 degrees. That'd be awesome. I'd never see the light. I'd never see the visual effects of the light. It would just light my tank perfectly from the ceiling. It'd be the, one of the coolest applications of light possible. So, uh, Polk Kessel, try to get him to re make a recessed uh, can of this thing. It would be awesome. So, mounting options, 0 to 10. What do you give this one? I mean, it's pretty hard to install. It's pretty unique. I'm going to give it, like, a 3. Yeah, because of its uniqueness and only a very small handful of reefers would probably choose this option for a very specific purpose. Uh, it doesn't fit the wide masses, and that means it doesn't fit me. It gives it two. Yeah, also two. Whoa. Uh, also, when I even talk to them, they, the reason why they don't sell these things to a lot of stores is because it's hard to identify how many you're going to even need. Yeah, you know, true. It's just not a commonly uh, used thing. So, and I mean, you can very obviously see that this is designed for a studio, stage lighting, studio stage yeah. lighting. Mm -hmm. 
uh, that's been kind of adapted to this. So let's adapt it even more to the home environment, right? Yeah, for sure. All right. So uh, aesthetic one? appeal. I mean, this is Kessel, so it's the thing, same things you like specifically about Kessel, the shimmer, the color, the spectrum, all yeah. those things is blended. You don't see little dots of green and red shooting all over the place. It's so it's Kessel, and so inside the tank, uh, it gets a high score for me. Uh, outside of the tank, for this unique pur purpose, probably gets a high score. Well, for okay, me too. one last time. Pull up that photo of their office. This is so a cool. Aesthetic appeal, <laughs> done correctly. Uh, look at this. This is like a solid eight for me, all around. So uh, aesthetic appeal. It's gonna grow coral. It's gonna look nice. It's designed for its purpose. I'm gonna give it an eight. Okay. What did you um, give it? I didn't give it, but because look, I mean, everybody's watching this right now. That is awesome. It gets a seven point five for me. All right, so uh, you're going to tally up all those things. He's going to give us the final number on it in just a second. Adam's tallying it up. Final comments on this. Where would you use it? I would use this exactly the way Kessel did in their lobby. So I see this like in a business. I see this in if I had a big house with, you know, an mm -hmm. upper level that I look down into this larger, you know, huge ceiling type place. I see these massive 2,000, 3,000 gallon tanks, these just massive installs. If I have the money to, for all of that in my house, I have the money for this type of lighting. <laughs> in <laughs> which case, that's probably where I would use it. For the average reefer, if they came out with some can and stuff, it might, I might consider it you know, for a really cool recess type thing. Uh, but my average everyday hobbyist, this isn't my first option. Uh, so I would use it for big, unique installs exactly as it's designed for. Yeah, I think some maybe some in walls, all kinds of applications where you just don't want to deal with the light in, in there. Yeah. Uh, especially if you can find a way to install it in the into the ceiling yeah. uh, in, a, in a way that's hidden. I'd use in all those. What's the number? Twenty nine point eight five. Uh, divide is twenty nine point so eight five. So added all yours together, added all mine together, added those together, and averaged them. That's right, the twenty nine point eight five uh, there you is go. the current leader because we only talked about the ones. <laughs> the all right. Box. So what's the next one here? We've got four more, and the next one is the. ATI, this one's really surprising, ATI T5 four bulb fixture. So if you can kind of get the gist here, we're going by cost per par, highest to lowest. I was really surprised to see this at the top of the list for cost per par, but there's a very specific reason why it does so that. So $3.45 is the highest measurable cost per par so far. Yeah, and it, I mean, it's a little unfair here because like you, uh, like we talked about, it, the cost gets lower as you go, as you get like 36 inch, 48 inch fixtures and, and so on. Uh, but this is with four bulbs. The par was a low output here. Total average is six inches. Uh, and after you calculate bulbs and the cost of the fixture, 500 bucks. Yeah, so just for you goes, cost for par is the total cost 500 bucks divided by the uh, average par here, $3.45. All right, so here's the problem. Uh, that isn't totally accurate with this thing because we've chose this is the least like cost effective T5 solution you can get because if you add two bulbs to it, it only adds like 40 bucks. Yeah, you add right? two more bulbs and yeah. it adds like 120. Yeah, very, very, very yeah. little. And if you add uh, 12 inches to it, make it three feet, it's like 40 more bucks. So like this two foot, four foot bulb version is the most expensive, but it is one of the ones that we tested, so we added it in there. That's true. Uh, but uh, we'll explain uh, the other things we liked about it. Most expensive, does it perform uh, in a way that justifies that, I guess? So spread, you know, talking about spread. Oh, well, this gets a 1.0, I guess, for cost per par, right? 1.0. 1.0. Yep. Uh, so when we talk about spread, though, like T5s are the gold standard for spread that we talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, and the wider you get, the more bulbs you get, the more spread, because it's shaped like the size of the tank that you're trying to illuminate. In which case here, you know, we found its optimal mounting height at 9 inches, and you have 187 to 101 center to outside. That means the outside is 54%, has 54% of the center, which is a, actually a pretty good spread. Uh, it's right in the middle. Just for reference point, everybody, Yeah. the best we've seen in any any of the lights that we've tested is 80 percent, meaning yeah. the outside ring of the tank is 80 percent of the par as the center. So if you're looking Barely for what uh, the best possible for performance is, that's what that one is. And you'll see how far away uh, any of them are from that one uh, as, as we go on. So I don't know. That was pretty good. So in, sp in terms of spread and you're limited, it's a four bulb fixture, but in d because of the shape, you know, front to back, it does spread out the light pretty well. So yeah, I do like that about it, but uh, like we, were, we talked about earlier, what we, what we could see to improve on, 
space those things out further. I yeah. bet you could get a better spread. That was one of the things. I was actually having a hard time thinking about how you would actually improve upon this design. And if I only needed four balls, one of the mm. best things you could do is actually give me a wider fixture yep. and space the bulbs out. Because what happens is all the light intersects and gets brightest in the center. Yeah. So if you want the outside edges of the tank to be brighter, just kind of move them out. We found that I found that with the Lumi light, uh, the standard Lumi lights. We mounted them at two inches off the top of the tank, but there was five of them spread across all 24 inches. The spread was phenomenal. Nice. So the further you space them out, the better spread you'll get. Knowing that there's an eight ball version of this, I really can't give it better than a six. I I'm in I'm in the five range. I'm right in the I'm right in the middle because I know I'm not I'm I'm, I'm probably going to step up if the cost is only like sixty bucks to hundred to hundred twenty bucks to upgrade to a 40. wider one. Some more. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna give it a four. All right. So spectrum here. Uh, this is the first time you're gonna see some spectrum. So this one, the way that you would adjust the spectrum is by what bulbs you buy. Yeah, we did a, mass, a, a massive investigates on all the different bulb types, what they look like in the tank, how do they compare to each other. Uh, we also came up with the custom uh, bulb you know, mixes for the four, six, and eight bulb. Uh, here is the example here. This is what the tank looks like with this thing on it. And two blue plus, core plus, and an actinic. You know, one of the interesting things actually about this mix before we move on, I think it was, it was actually interesting, is a lot of people think like that actinic bulb is like low par. And oh, because it looks dim in the tank, and it's not. It's like 20% uh, uh, lower par than uh, some of the other ones in there. Even the white ones. But yeah. when you divide that uh, up amongst the fact it's only representing 25% of the light to begin with, it drops overall par 5%, which uh, if you're looking at 200 par, would you even notice the difference between 190 and 200? No, not, at, that, all, that, not yeah. at all. So actually, I don't think it matters as much as most people think. And actually, our testing says it doesn't. Right. Uh, unless you care about 190 versus 200. If you do, <laughs> then I guess so. Uh, all right, so that is the spectrum there. Uh, and uh, let's see what it looks like in the chart when you put it together. So here's the... Uh, First of all, the ATI T5 Blue Plus is the gold standard that we've been basing all of our uh, you know, spectrum you know, comparisons against. Here's that four bulb in that uh, custom setup that we did. I mean, look, this is exactly what we aim for. Wide, wide blue spectrum from 400 to 500. This thing has that whole thing covered with a peak, uh, you know, like around 430, 440. I did. This is ideal to me. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. So uh, this actually looked really sharp in the tank in terms of color-wise for the most part, too. Mm -hmm. And so uh, also, do you have the little uh, video of it uh, yeah. cycling? So the, before we get to show this, oh, we can show right what we're doing. Uh, this is nine shots underneath the tank with water flow uh, showing this spectrum does not change, right? It's not LEDs. It's not yep. shooting all over the place. Yep. Green's popping up. Red's popping up. The blue peaks moves. shifting all over the place. This is super evenly blended spectrum. This is the like gold standard, platinum, palladium, whatever it is, standard. Yep. Uh, you can't beat this. Yeah, so. I mean, if you watch, if you go back and watch any of our videos uh, or any of my videos on that spectrum and you see this dynamic spectrum test, this is one that uh, if you don't know what good looks like, watch this spectrum that we just saw and then go look at all of the other dynamic spectrum tests and you'll see that what creates that disco ball effect. Why you might see red over here and green over here and blue over here and then you'll also see the lights that do it really well just like the T5. Okay, so what could be improved on this? Uh, nothing. <laughs> this is so hard. I mean, we did talk about like all the coral pop comes from like that 455 range, so mm -hmm. this is uh, you know a little south of that uh, in its weight, but so maybe a little more pop. So if you peaked that 450 in the center there a little bit more, and you'd see the ratio kind of drop, and the be uh, rest of it, you'd see that artificially uh, yeah. like fluorescent color pop out. A lot of people would prefer that. So I'm gonna give it a nine based on some people would like to prefer that artificial kind of pop out of it. And I say artificial, it's cool. So I yeah. don't make it sound like it's bad. It's just uh, it is really cool. But mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna give it a nine because some people like to see that. You can actually add that in with like a reef bright or something after the fact anyway. Yeah, I'll give it an 8.5 because I love that coral pop and I kind of miss it with the uh, flat color of the T5s. All right, so control. Now this one is, it's two plugs. You turn it on, you turn it off. All right, so the advent of control is largely because you need to figure out how to control all those dumb LED channels to produce a, an effective mix, right? Yeah. This one, I plug it in the wall and it's done. And it works. Uh, the fact that it doesn't need control is why it's awesome. 
Yeah, right? That's so true. we talk plug and play results all the time, and this is it. You plug it in the wall, and the corals grow. <laughs> uh, and so I don't know. You know, you don't get your phone app. You don't get all the fun sliders. You can get a dimmable version, which will allow get you, like, dust to dawn effects and stuff. It is more expensive. Yeah, it is. But uh, I don't know, man. I mean... Uh, I like the fact it's plug and play. It doesn't need control. It's on off. I mean, that's a benefit to me. On off, on off functionality and control speaks to me in especially in like when I hook it up to an Apex or something like that because I turn one bank on at set time and it goes for nine hours. I turn the other bank on for set at set time and it goes for nine hours. I'm done. Like I know this thing is going to be on when it needs to be on and off when it needs to be off. Not changing intensities, not doing any other thing else. So you guys, this is actually an important factor right here. So. If I was buying this myself as just a customer, I never really like uh, reviewed all this stuff. I just think that the no control thing is an argument for garbage. Like it doesn't make any sense to me. However, like as somebody who has had to help hundreds if not thousands of people mm. be successful Figure with their lights control. and seeing how few of them actually act get it right out of the gate, how many animals that they've killed trying to do it, <laughs> how little guidance there is to actually get this right. That's true. If you were me, you would value plug it in the wall and watch all those people succeed. Well, I mean, think about your own lights or other lights that you may have opened up. You plug them into the wall and then you open up the app or whatever and you're like, wow, okay, now what? Uh, this, there is no now what. So what could be improved? There is uh, some. Yeah, I, can't, I, I thought of you know, a zero to 10 volt control. So if it were built in, there are some T5 fixtures out there that have it built in without having to get a separate module. Uh, so zero to 10 volt control to, to dim it down and you know, time out, uh, help time it out so it's in like my apex or whatever. I mean, outside of that, a timer is all you need. I'll give it a nine too for this, or a nine anyway, for the yep. same reason is uh, if it was apex ready or zero to 10 volt ready, it would be the last thing. Uh, and honestly, after all the years that this has been out, why the dimmable one doesn't have a zero to 10 is kind of mind boggling. It's, uh, it's but, interesting, but uh, I'll give it a nine. Nine as well. All right. Okay. Okay. So uh, uh, mounting options. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, this is uh, this is gets a yeah. low rating for me. I'm just gonna go ahead and say right now, mounting option wise, I am at a five because at least it includes something to mount it, but it's only ceiling mount. Yeah, so we like the fact that it comes with a ceiling kit and you can attach it into your ceiling, you know, through the little cables and, and whatnot. But uh, here's the problem mm. is like this thing, it, like one of the beauties of it is like the size of the tank, you know, in almost every case you have it is the width of the tank. Yeah. So why not legs? Right. Why does it, legs not exist for this? The thing? optimal mounting height that we found for this was nine inches. There are plenty of leg options out there that can get you up to nine inches. I am pretty certain this thing's been around in the hobby longer than I've been in the hobby. <laughs> Meaning sure. 15 years we haven't found a way to put legs on this yet. <laughs> I don't know. So that one kind of bothers me a little bit. Uh, there's a lot of people who would like to just bolt some legs on the side of it and drop it on the tank yeah. and be done with it. Mm -hmm. They don't want to drill holes in their in the ceiling. What if you don't get it right and it's off and it's kiddywampus? There's really easy ways to do it. but. If yeah. you didn't know any better right off the bat, you might do it wrong. And and you, if you think about like tank tank mount options, this uh, four bulb is kind of heavy, but they just get progressively heavier from then. Mm -hmm. So you know, uh, hanging off the edge of my tank or my glass is probably not the best way that I would, but easily put a little pair of legs well, on. Or or uh, like a, a mounting bracket. Mm -hmm. uh, like so, yeah. a lot of the brackets that come up the back of your tank, they kind of hang it over. I don't really like those because it looks like it's putting too much pressure on the glass. But the ones that just rest on the side. There uh, absolutely you'd use but wall brackets as well mm -hmm. uh Giesman sells some there's no reason that this kind of light is so popular so many people have used it over the years that you couldn't just get a wall bracket that comes out of the wall and hangs uh, out to hang it off yep of. all right so uh I, you said five yeah I, I like like this is bagging for legs. I'm gonna give it a three. Okay. I mean, the only mounting option you have is drill holes in your ceiling. Uh, well, not an option uh, for a lot of people. Yeah, I don't your know. Significant others are gonna be judging your work. Oh, yeah, you mess <laughs> it up. All right. So aesthetic appeal. Uh, again, the only reason we really have these tanks. So uh, the the fixture matches the size of the tank. Which for me is like brings balance. You know, if this, I put this on top of the tank, yeah. it brings balance into the universe and looks like it belongs on top of it, covers the whole tank, looks nice. Yeah, it's nice when I have uh, like a 48 inch tank and my fixture's 48 inches long. And now, you know, if I say I have a white stand and this silver, you know, this silver housing on this thing looks really good in that type of environment. Uh, we actually have a shot of it here mounted over there. 
So here, yeah. I mean, yeah. there you go. Four. That's what the tank looks like. That's the E170 there, uh, live in action with, uh, I guess not live, but recorded uh, an hour ago. Yep. And uh, here's the thing, man. Super flat look though. Yeah. No, no shimmer. So Almost looks like a, a painting of a, a coral reef other than the fish. Yeah, and that's part of the aesthetic peel. We said, you know, the aesthetic peel outside of the tank is important, but this inside is uh, even more important. So automatically, because I've done it before and I've used ATIs, I'm going to supplement something in here to bring out the shimmer and the pop and things that I want. Uh, it's just not on its own. It's not doing it for me here. So. Okay, so here's the big thing here. Yeah. The, the piece that is kind of strange to even talk about, but it's true, is this type of light Fluorescent light specifically, mm -hmm. and that, that's what this tank is. Act this tank is Kessel actually, uh, uh, the ATI or not ATI, yeah, aquatic light aquatic fixture life with TFIs with blue plus. But that produced this tank. Yeah. But now that we got this over there, I'm gonna tell you right now that the fluorescent light, like these uh, these sun powers, will produce epic corals. The corals will grow big. They'll be healthy. They'll be colorful. They might not have that like weird or or, or not weird. I actually because I actually mm. like it. But the that fluorescent pop that's like a little bit artificial from that uh, 450 uh, peak. Yeah. It won't have that. It'll be, always look just like a little bit flat or yeah. kind of have like that Windexy look to it. But the corals themselves will look healthy, and healthy corals look awesome. That's true. Uh, I th is this a little deceiving here? Because I'm watching some of the comments as they come through too. And you know, there is shimmer on top of the tank. That's reflection. There is shimmer on the sides of the tank. That's the Kessels in the other tank. So really no flat, or they're really flat shimmer here. And uh, I think Pandom uh, Pandemonia says it best. So he says, I'd rather hug a cactus than watch a tank without shimmer. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. I don't know. Okay. This is just a personal appeal, yeah. but uh, it uh, this shimmered was my, to me. This was my first choice. I did T5 only when I first started the hobby, and I actually thought you know it looked pretty cool. Uh, so there's some nostalgia here for me, but... Uh, I would give the aesthetic appeal inside, outside of the tank, you know, without supplementing it with, you know, some kind of other LED stripper to bring out the shimmer. It, it gets a, would I do T5 only on my own? No, I'd probably go four on this one. Oof. Wow, I thought you would be The higher. color is awesome, uh, so maybe I'll, I'll bump it up to a five for the actual color, but I, that flat look. Yeah. The flat look. This is the only color No housing. contrast, yeah. everything's illuminated the same, no shadows. And shadows aren't good for the corals, but some amount of, some Depth. of it's not shadow, it's just like it's dark. It's just contrasty yeah. and some areas are a little bit brighter than others. Yeah. No shimmer, you lose that sense of movement. I'm gonna go with your four, actually. Okay, uh, right. uh, I don't know, aesthetic appeal, it's a big you know, metal box on top of the tank. I had to hang it from the ceiling. Uh, it's flat looking. This just isn't my personal favorite. I, it will grow coral like a champion. Oh, like nobody's business. Maybe better than everything else that we uh, uh, talk about today. Yeah, but doesn't look the best. That, I agree. All right. Okay. So uh, where so, would you use this thing? Adam's telling it up, but where would I use this? I've used it. I've used it a whole bunch of times. Now the, we're talking about the, specifically the four bulb here, and not we'll talk about the six and the eight and other episodes, but. Specifically here, I tested this one because of the PAR output. If I was gonna use this on its own, uh, I'm using it in like an LPS tank, you know, basically just LPS tank only. And maybe I can get some lower light. I mean, I could probably get some SPS at the very top of the tank. This makes a solid LPS light. If I add some Reef Bright uh, XHOs to it to bring in some depth and some shimmer, uh, and probably a little boost in PAR also if I use like a couple of them, uh, mixed it. So for me, I would get somebody who is a relatively uh, new to reefing. I'd recommend this in a heartbeat. Oh, you can't, yeah, right? you can't fail with this thing. Yeah, because uh, you can plug it in, you'll be successful, you'll find the other elements uh, later on in your reefing career. So here's the thing, is you don't know what you're missing if you've never seen it. So the problem here is Randy and I have seen every last That's light true. on so many tanks, we can nitpick the hell out of it. Yep. But, if you didn't know any better and you saw, can you pull up that tank again? If you didn't know any better and you saw this tank. This looks awesome. You would say, mission accomplished. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Right? Yeah, uh, for you sure. would not be disappointed in what you've created here. 
uh, I could show you better, and then you would miss it. It's like shopping at Best Buy for TVs. If you brought any TV to my house, I'd probably say they're all awesome. Oh, yeah. But if you put one next to the other one, I'm like, that one does look better. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I, I don't know. Uh, so in that spirit, what do we got? 32.25 is now the uh, first place. Yep. Uh, it's only two, but it's now first place. Two out of 20 All right, so likes. next one. <clears throat> okay, so we're moving on to the uh, little guy right here, the Orphic V4 Compact. Uh, uh -huh. So in cost per par, we've got uh, average par here at six inches. It's 236. You can see it's a massive, uh, you know, 792 center, 63 outer. At a $770 cost, that brings it to $3.26 cost per par, per, per par. So, so that makes that the third most expensive cost per par that we have, but uh, most expensive is only one piece of the whole thing. Uh, sometimes yeah. you have performance with it, we'll, we'll discuss what that's so true. So in cost per par, this gets a 1.5. Yeah, 1.5, scaling up. Yep. All right, so, uh, all right. so in that, uh, in terms of spread, uh, let's hit the, the spread tile here at six inches, or I mean, I'm sorry, at so, uh, uh, how many inches was it? This is 16 inches. So as you, as you know, we raise it from six inches all the way up until we find this optimal mounting height where we can spread all this light out as evenly as possible. What that means here is we found 340 in the center, 148 in the outside. So 43% of the outside is the center, in which case, uh, again, you know, we've seen better. We've seen 60-some percents. We know that there's 80-some percent out there. So, you know, middle, bottom, middle as far as spread, 16 inches off the, off the top of the tank is where this thing performs the best because it's kind of like uh, focused little individual uh, LEDs. So this is the one cool thing about this one for yep. me that's different than most of them. Okay, this one, the manufacturer actually mm. designed it to be that strong or that or mounted at that high. Yep. Uh, and I know that because the leg mounting kit is designed to go that Yeah, high, I think the, right? the mounting uh, arms that hang on the back can actually go up to like 17 inches. So it's made for that. Some of the ones you'll see here actually are ideal at like uh, 18 inches, but it's by like not on purpose. <laughs> it was poor design. Yeah. So in this case, man, you designed it to be a light that goes above your tank. And so there's advantages to that. Mm -hmm. Like I can go in it without having to raise the t lay light up and down all these times. Yeah. I can, you know, access this tank. And generally speaking, you know, if I bring it up higher and higher and higher, little cones of LEDs are going to spread, you know, overlap each other a little bit better. Uh, and hopefully get a little bit more blending. You may not catch that in yep. every last test that we do, but uh, and generally speaking, that would be true. Yeah, so you know, if there was something you could approve about the Orphic here, in terms of spread, it what would it be? In terms of spread, uh, I don't know, man. There's not really, like, if you're gonna get a light that is, is going to be mounted at 16 to. inches, yeah. Uh, it has to shoot it down, you know, and it's going to have not the like widest spread possible. Right? Yeah, so you can you can uh, you know you can account for uh, some more loss of efficiency if this forty three percent spread uh, doesn't cut it for you, and you want more spread, you can raise it higher, but that also comes at an efficiency cost. So it's like this whack a mole game. Like, do you focus the the lenses even more so you can go even higher, but get the spread? And it's like you're playing all over the place. So uh, is for a, one of the only lights that we measured other than like the the T three sixty five that goes above you know twelve, sixteen, fourteen inches. Like, <laughs> The spread on this is pretty good. One of the other things about this light that is actually, again, designed to be mounted uh, high, yeah. right, is one of the problems with mounting high, lights high is from a sitting position, Blind. you can see the light and it just like blinds you, right? Yeah. And I, I'll, I'll say it right now, the Radeon G4s, was it, with the mm. little dimples on the bottom, yes. yeah, yeah, were yeah. notorious for that. People would actually like, you know, angle them, them in yeah. or like, you know, put things on them and like the diffusers are a decent option. Mm -hmm. But uh, from a sitting position, if it's in my living space, I don't want to be blinded by it. So uh, actually, this thing was one of the shockers when I plugged it in, is mm. this little acrylic shield here, what it does is the lenses are inside, a, it's like a double lens almost. Yep. So the lenses inside here bounce off the acrylic shield and go down. And so for the most part, unless it's just an extreme angle, 
you can't really get the, you don't get the direct LED like in your face. And so that's another benefit of when you're designing for, you know, something that is going to be mounted high, mm. it's more than just getting the light to go down. It's also aesthetic appeal, like, like function, and yeah. form needs to match function. So I, I don't know, that was a cool piece of this one. Yeah, I think that's one of the only ones that didn't do the, didn't do that as abrasively from a super high mounting height. So, and for some, 16 inches is what you need. So the only okay. like thing uh, I improved on spread on this one is, I don't know, I guess my expectations were wrong. Okay. But when I first saw some of these big grids of LEDs, and like, oh, this is gonna be the thing that beats uh, like uh, T5s, T5s yeah. or whatnot. And it, it just, just because it looks like that doesn't mean it's gonna behave like True. that. And it doesn't. So it has a, a little bit more of a fall off uh, than it does in T5. So if you can improve on that, great. Okay, so, so spread for me, you know, I can I, I can kind of make some of my best judgment off of the percentage of the outside to center at its optimal mounting height. In which case, this one is gonna get six point five for me for spread, because I've seen I've seen better. I think you've influenced me. Oh, I don't know. I'm hard to get away from that. I'm gonna go six point seven. Okay. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Good job. Uh, Good luck. All right. Adam. So, uh, and then terms of uh, spectrum offering and the quality of the light. Mm, all right. Okay. So let's look at it. So again. Uh, that white outline is the ATI T5 Blue Plus bulb that we you know, compare each one of them. This is our, our custom settings that we made for the uh, Orphic. Uh, and it's actually pretty wide here. So it's not, doesn't have the same peak. As you can see, the peak here is actually towards like 455, 460, which is that coral pop and for fluorescence uh, area. But like the rest of it is kind of filled in down towards the bottom. There's only two lights that are you're gonna see that look like this and I'll just spell it out there right you now. Go. It's gonna be this one yep. and uh, the Kessel. Uh, Kessel. None of the other ones emulate that T5 ATI Blue Plus bulb. As wide. All right, and so actually this is an important point to, to make right now. So uh, people ask why we use the ATI Blue Plus, and it's not because we have definitively proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that it is the best possible spectrum yeah. out there, because nobody's ever gonna be able to produce that. <laughs> There's no uh, amount of uh, experiments or anything that will ever like get everybody on board in that. Yep. But the one thing that we can say is that ATI two, T5 bulb has probably grown more corals in the United States and even probably Europe than any other light source, done it more reliably and more mm -hmm. successfully. Mm -hmm. so for a longer I, period of time. For a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. So if I'm gonna measure against something, I'm gonna measure against the light source that I believe has produced the most success and quality of light and the spectrum of light that's offered those corals, that's why we're using that. For sure. A and so this one matches that perfectly, or near perfectly anyway. It pretty well. Uh, except uh, when you look at that dynamic spectrum. So then this is again shot underwater with yep. the pumps going and you can see how the lenses are capturing the ripples of the water now and so it changes. I'm seeing color, I, I could equate this to seeing different colors in the tank to some degree. I mean, we just saw the ATI T5, you know, and how it just didn't move or fluctuate at all. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, what LEDs are uh, known for kind of doing, depending on their lens design. Some do it better. This isn't one of the best that we've seen, but mm -hmm. it, it's, it's not the worst either, I've seen worse. So I'm gonna tell you that I feel like this is indicative of a lot of the panels of LEDs that have a lot of them under uh, fairly focused lenses. Right. They tend to catch the ripples of the water and shoot little laser beams of spectrum around. Right. That's why they're mounted, when you mount them high, they work the best. So in that spirit, all right, what do you raise uh, uh, the, uh, the spectrum? Well, zero to 10. Okay, zero to 10 spectrum. I'm gonna give this one, but then I'm gonna give an improvement too. Uh, oh. So. In, because of the wide spectrum, and that's what we target all the time, and it's like the second best we've seen, you know, second or third best we've seen in LEDs, uh, close to that T5, I gotta give it high marks for that, but I'm gonna dock it for that dynamic spectrum test because uh, you can obviously see the color sh uh, shifting around. That puts me right around like, uh, oh man, I'm gonna go with your 6.7 for the last uh, category. 6.7 because, uh, that, that dynamic just throws it off for me. I have to dock so, it. So I'm gonna give it a five. Okay. And so it's matched that spectrum really, really, really well. Really well. So that's half the equation yep. done. But if spectrum matters, if you're going to say that spectrum matters, how can uneven you know, ripples of those photons shooting focused, if I can see with the naked eye, mm. little red beams shooting around, then 
how can I come to the conclusion that it doesn't matter? So five uh, has fair. the available spectrum, That's doesn't fair. mix it perfectly. So, right. what, I mean, in that spirit, they could improve it, like, with mm. a diffuser lens or something like that. Like, find a way to blend those better from the source of light so that it doesn't isn't trying to blend 16 inches off the top of the tank in my box. Uh, but doing that, you're going to have to mount it lower because you lose some efficiency with a diffuser. So that actually uh, brings up one that we'll talk about later, mm. which is uh, the Philips Coral Care, which ah. is essentially a grid of light like this with a diffuser. Yep. Uh, and so, and how that performs. But I think Orphic could make a version of this that has a diffuser on it and have the perfect spectrum matched with having it blended well. Mm -hmm. The thing now, though, is it won't be designed at, at, at 16 inches. inches. So yeah. if you need 16 inches, uh, it will no longer work. And you may say, oh, I don't need that. Well, that's, that's cool. just you. Yeah. So we saw over at Sean's tank, that 2,000 gallon tank, he had a whole like wall of these, like the whole sky, yeah. basically, of these. Uh, and you also saw the type of results that it produced. But uh, in that case, man, he could not have that thing eight inches off. It would be no. just a total nightmare to maintenance it. For sure. So right tool, right job is if I put diffusers on it, it would no longer work for the application. Yep. So uh, yes, yes and no. All right, control. Okay. How we implement it, uh, how do you control the light? Uh, so in this one, it's... Uh, it, four channels of control. So I've got four different color channels. You can see here, this is our BRS custom setting. But I mean, what you're looking at here is basically the control. There are some um, modes that are preset in there. I flipped through a few of them. I personally don't agree with, you know, the spectrum that they have for cut, like LPS, SPS, this and that. Just, it looks a little funky in the tank and it didn't come kind of close to what we shot for spectrum. So control wise, I've got that big wire, uh, you know, that big antenna off of there. I have to buy an, another accessory, the gateway to control it. And that's the only control I have of it. So mm -hmm. in that spirit, like, I would I would like to have you know one purchase out of the box. There's other lights out of there out of the box. I can control right away. If it had onboard controls and the option to control it with something separate, that'd tickle my fancy. But having the only option is buying something separate to control it. Docks some points for me on that, but. Uh, I think most people's biggest frustration yeah. with the light is actually control. You have to get that gateway. Gateway is mm -hmm. a little wonky to set up. Once you get it set up, it works. It and works. the actual controls are really easy to use. However, uh, I'm an onboard control guy. I like to mm -hmm. just walk up to my light and set it. Hey, it's only four channels, so you would think that onboard control would be pretty easy to do. Yeah. So uh, in that spirit, in terms of control uh, of all the options, everybody's got phone apps, everybody's got direct control. They got all the different things out there, onboard controls. I'm going to give this one like a uh, four. I don't like that fact that I am have to buy something to control it. And it is, uh, it is another uh, significant cost. It wasn't worked in the cost per par here, uh, but it is a, an, an, an additional cost that some people just might be blindsided by. And I'd, I'd rather have some transparency in that uh, and you know include something for me to control it, not no option whatsoever, 3.5. All right, so uh, moving on to uh, mounting options and how you'd mount this guy. There's, uh, there's two options you know that Orphic has. One is it comes with a hanging kit. I really like this hanging kit if you're into the hanging kit because uh, look at this thing. It's got four, you know, these things screw down in there. These points screw down in there very deep. It's really firm. It's really secure, it feels like. Uh, what I also like is the hanging kit has hooks. So instead of being affixed here where I have to like pull my cables down and do all this, I just lift up the light, unhook four of them, and I can remove my light if I have to. And I really like that. In fact, you can't see it, but the hood over here, which it takes two guys to lift, it's pretty oh, yeah. heavy, is using. We That's right. uh, owned it from here. That's uh, right. And use the hooks on here. So they're super heavy duty, yep. and the hook, and they come in and out really easy. You don't have to use all the zip ties I and am, stuff. I'm not afraid of hanging this light over with that hanging kit. Very sturdy, very heavy duty. They also have these uh, mounting legs, which I've seen lots of people mo uh, repurpose for other lights. Uh, here you can see, like, well, like we said earlier, when it comes to mounting height, this has the ability to go up to like 17 inches. So they have made it f specifically for this light, knowing that it needs to be mounted high, which is nice. I like that about uh, Orphic that they, you know, owned up to that. Uh, that you can see the left picture, it goes around the edge of the glass. So rimless is your option here, unless you kind of DIY some trim. Uh, and it's 16 inches, which almost extends this thing all the way out. Uh, you start to 
get concerned about weight and the pressure it puts on your glass. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not so much worried about it about the compact uh, and holding a single one because it's pretty light. Um, but when we start to get into the bigger options, I'm a little more concerned. So one of the things that could be improved for me is uh, I think AI makes a wall bracket that screws into your stand, ah, you know, yep. and so you don't have yep. to rest it on the glass. That'd yep. be a good option. Also brackets that come off the wall. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so aesthetic appeal. Let's see it in well, the... Oh, let's well, rate that one. Oh, let's rate it. So mounting options. Uh, I love, this is one of my, by far one of my favorite hanging kits because of the hooks. Uh, and the mounting legs are universal for a lot of other lights that I like to use, but uh, specifically for the Compax case, um, I, this one gets an 8.5 for me for mounting options. I, I like these mounting options, especially since that le the legs go the height that, you're in, that it's intended for. All right, so you can go up the ceiling, you can't go up the wall, you can't span the whole tank with a Lego leg system, yep. uh, but you can uh, hang it off the back. I'm gonna give it like a six and a half. Okay. All, All right. right. All right, so aesthetic appeal. Uh, again, only reason we own these things. Yeah, so this is one that you said when we first, when the Atlantic V4s first came out, we tested the large one. Uh, and it, it applies to the compact because it's just kind of like the same ratio of LEDs. This is one light where all channels at 100%, the tank actually looks really good. Yeah, let's see it. So I don't know if that's what, if we, maybe this is what we set it to, but either way, like even our custom settings and this, if you go back to our custom settings that we saw here, the only thing that's not 100% is like this white yellow channel and that's just, you know, to uh, balance out some of the blues. So UV, blue, and uh, what other mixed channel is in there, plus this little white, almost all channels are at 100%. It looks awesome. Can we see on the external portion of the tank again? All right, so you can see, man, it's actually pretty low profile and you mm -hmm. can see now why some people would like to have the light 18 inches off the tank, or 16 inches well, rather. Look at the wall at the back of the wall there too. Most lights that you would see mounted this high, you would see the spill off the side of the wall behind this tank. It's not there then, that's that acrylic panel. You can actually see that I have this, the Kessel on the side there like mounted a little too high and the spill that it puts in there, mm -hmm. but you don't see it from this, yeah. even though it's mounted so high. Yeah. So for you wondering, you're like, oh, why would I ever want to do it this high? And you can also see how the light isn't shining in the camera either, otherwise it'd be totally overexposed True. that little acrylic rim is kind of glowing but like you can see now how it's directing the light into the tank tank looks awesome let's see inside of it so uh, you look back to our dynamic spectrum test and you kind of look at the shimmer here and if we could push in you'd probably you know see a little more of this shimmer but uh, the shimmers I mean it's LEDs over tanks so you're going to get shimmer I think that when you really focus in on this light, there you'll see some of that color separation come through from the dynamic test, even at 16 inches. So the colors look awesome. Uh, the shimmer is not like in my face all over the place, but I do think that we would see some separation. Yeah, I know you will. But uh, like you can't see it from here and you gotta be nitpicky. You yeah. have to go looking for it. <laughs> that's true. Uh, but if we're talking, if we're splitting hairs and you guys are, I'm sure that's what you want us to do is split hairs yep. here, is uh, take our experience and share it with you. Mm -hmm. You can see how it looks kind of like, instead of shimmery, fuzzy. Yeah, right? that's There's true. so many light sources here that are intersecting it, that it gives a sense of movement, but it's kind of more like a, a flicker. Yeah, especially in those is shadowed, a shimmer. Those little shadowed areas are right on the, the margins of the shadowed areas. You can really see it. Now again, if you didn't know any better and I just showed you this tank, this you would awesome. all say that tank looks awesome. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I'm nitpicking and we're looking for tens and we're, uh, you know, trying to assemble this all together. Yeah, tens hard to... to but give. in general, aesthetic appeal. Let's look at the outside of the tank one more time. Actually, because I've seen it here again, reminds me how nice this actually looks and how it's easy to get it in the tank. Uh, got one cord, covers the whole thing. Uh, and then inside the tank, the little bit of shimmer, mm -hmm. uh, how it makes the tank look. I'm gonna give this uh, an aesthetic appeal, like a solid eight. Okay, I mean, that's fair. You know, I think that the, uh, the bigger brother that we're gonna talk about here in a bit looks better, like side by side on a four foot tank. Uh, but for a 24 inch by 24 inch cube, this little tiny uh, fixture at 16 inches, um, it's out of the way. My tank looks awesome without the rest of my room looking blue. Uh, 
eight points. My big thing I would love to see the most yeah. is actually if it had a leg system, kind of like the one that like the Radeon has, where there's a leg that goes across and rests oh. on the side. Mm -hmm. If you could have that, but again, I guess it'd have to be. You have to be sixty It'd inches off. Never mind. Yeah, it'd be weird. Uh, if they ever do a diffused version of it, then do that. There you go. Uh, all right, so uh, we'll ask uh, Adam to tally it all up here. But uh, what would you use this on? What tank would you use this on? So, given the par numbers and the behind the scenes, because uh, we, you know, we tested it extensively, uh, it doesn't have the oomph for a jam-packed wall-to-wall on its own in like a 24 by 24 inch area. So. Mounting height of 16 inches, uh, rimless tank if I want to use the legs, uh, or make sure you have a ceiling to hang this thing from. Uh, make sure you have 16 inches of clearance to hang this thing from. I'm using it for a solid mixed tank light because it does have some of those higher par in 200 to 350, like in the center and kind of some in the middle. So strategically place your SPS. Uh, outside of that, dim, dim down the whole thing a little bit. Solid uh, LPS light as well. All right, I'm in a similar boat, right? I'd use this on the like the E170 is a no-brainer. It's a good one. For That's that. a awesome, yeah. awesome size. It's fit for that size. So the again for like a two-foot cube, we found that like mixed tank is the right solution. Yep. Probably not going to do SPS. And when I say two-foot cube, really what we're probably talking about is a 120 and using two of them. I probably wouldn't do that. I'd probably use three. Yeah. And that's what we came up with. So, uh, but with like a tank like the E170, like the one you were looking at, perfect solution. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I that's where I would use it especially if I want to be able to get in the tank and not worry about uh, any lights hanging over it, it, all that room, never worry about the light, it's game. If, if you haven't experienced it before, like I've had lights you know, with legs that are like inches off the top of the tank and that is a problem of getting in the tank. So it, because we've experienced the opposite of not being not having access, having something 16 inches and completely out of the way is a breath of fresh air. Yeah, actually, my first, uh, one of my first tanks was the, uh, had a sun tech fixture, T5 ah. on it. It had little legs on that. And uh, on that case, in that case, like it was a big pain in the butt to take it yes. off because they, they had to manage the cords and everything each yep. time. So yep. yeah, there you go. All right. All right. So what was- Adam. 33 and a half. 33 and a half. The that, next step up. Does that make it number one? Yep. All right. Barely well, we're, though, right? We're, 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 just barely. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so we're crawling up. Okay. All right, so all right, now we're going to the A360X Kessel, which is how much per par? Okay, average par at six inches, 156. It's a little uh, misleading here on the graph because we uh, these are the BR the 156 is the BRS custom settings, so go mm -hmm. off of that number. But cost at 449 makes it 288. Now we just dropped below the two uh, below the three dollar per par um, rate right here. Uh, you actually get both the Kessel A360X and with the narrow lens worked out to be the same 288. Uh, you just pay like, you know, I think the narrow reflector lens is like another 30 bucks, but 288 cost per par. Okay, so here's the deal. This light right here is the fourth most expensive light cost per par 2 that we sell. Yep. All right, so if the only thing you care about par, just move on right now. Yeah. But I'm gonna tell you, like a lot of people don't know the whole like deal behind Kessel, but these guys are the real deal. Like, so uh, I've been to a bunch of these facilities and uh, a lot of them are like uh, 10,000 square feet. Uh, the, uh, the Kessel facility yeah, is a camp Dicon. campus, yeah. right? These guys have been doing fiber optics and lighting for eons, <laughs> and, and you Some go there. High-tech equipment. Yeah, there's multi-million dollar electron microscopes bolted <laughs> 300 feet into the ground. Like, uh, they do optics for, you know, the horticulture industry, mm -hmm. for the reefing industry, stu lighting. studio yeah. lighting, stage lighting industry. Mm -hmm. So, and comes to a lighting company uh, it's not a reef company that decided to make a light at some point in time in their life. It's a lighting company that designed a light. Now, yes. you're going to decide for yourself whether or not it's a, worth the fourth most expensive uh, on the table Cost here. But only par, it's like, you know. That's not even half of the con. That's not even a quarter of the conversation. Yeah, like what if my uh, car had 600 horsepower, but it didn't have seats? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. I can stand in there. So I don't know. We'll find out along the way here. You can decide for yourself. But yeah, that is a, 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 one of the more costly options, and it does come with these little magnetic guys as well. All right. So... All right. All right. So that's cost per par. It gets a 2.0 because it's fourth on the list, and we're just going to keep rising by uh, fifths of a point until we get to a 10. 
but mm -hmm. uh, as far as spread goes, so we tested that. You just saw what it does at six inches, which is actually, I think we wrote the note here, but I forgot the numbers on the oh, other Oh, yeah, one. we go back to six uh, inches, actually. This was interesting. Yeah, at six inches, the difference between the outside to center par is right off the bat at six inches off the top of the tank, like, what do we say, 40, like 40 percent? So some are, some are not even getting to 40 percent until 16 inches off of the tank. Okay, so here you guys go, is six inches off the tank. So low. They have designed the this like optic that isn't even one inch uh, wide yep. to distribute the light, uh, tiny six inches out the tape, to distribute it so uh, the edges of the tank are closer to the center. No other light has done that, especially with a light source this tiny, yep. right? So it's in the engineering that it distributes the light. It's not just uh, like glue them to a board and hope for the best, <laughs> right? All right, so, but where did we find the best mounting height? So go to D2 there, Dave. This one, so we found the Kessel A360X at eight inches, uh, which improved from 40% to 60%. That means 60% of the center is out in the outer edges. That's a, a pretty great uh, spread at eight inches off the top of the water. That's nothing. Uh, so in which case, uh, this one for spread is one of the better options that we've seen, and there's like a handful that are right up there with it. So I'm going to share with you the opposite story here. Okay. So this is a great option if you want to mount this thing only eight inches off the tank. But if you want to mount it 12, it's a terrible option. That's true. Yeah, and right. you'll lose more than like 30, 40% of the actual light spilling outside of the tank. So that's a great, really big thing when you, as we're exploring all of these lights uh, throughout these episodes. It's not made for that high. Yeah, if, if you use a light that is designed for eight inches or nine inches and you decide to mount it at 12, expect an enormous amount of that light to spill onto your floor, mm -hmm. both uh, like probably not visually desirable, mm -hmm. but also like really, really inefficient. You should have picked a different option. Or in a significant, inefficient meaning like a significant drop in par. So if I was, the, if, if I was told that at eight inches, this light could hit SPS numbers, but I, need, but I mounted it at 12 instead, and it's designed for eight, like I'm going to lose some of that par ability to hit those numbers. Can you actually pull up the, the uh, video of this uh, mounted over the tank? Let's see here. So mm. you can see what a light mounted eight inches above the tank, and you can actually see how this one isn't spilling any light around. The, the one on the right is actually spilling uh, light onto the wall because it's mounted a little bit bet, uh, higher than eight inches, which is a mistake okay. that will probably fix. Yep. But you can see why, how the wrong mounting height is actually causing a problem, where it isn't in the center. All right, so just come back to me. I just wanted to show that, like, why you would want to mount it. And you also notice that at eight inches with a light that's this big, you can like really get in the tank. You don't have to mount it that high because it's out of the way by default. Well, you can get in, it's not obtrusive. In the, you know, we were talking about the Orphic being 16 inches off the top and I can access the tank and things like that. Eight inches, you would think, well, that gets in the way. But I mean, this is one of the smallest form factors uh, that provide that type of spread. No other light that we tested has a less than, or a little bit bigger than a quarter size or around a quarter size lens that spreads light out. That All right. So, okay. Here's the other thing. Yeah. This little magnet guy goes on the bottom of this thing, and now it becomes a totally different light. So when I said that this is a bad option for you, not so true. Ah. If you can just uh, magnet the, the uh, lens right on the bottom, the narrow lens now makes it into a light that works good at 13 inches. Here you go. This is one of the only lights out there, I think the, the only light out, can, out there that works at multiple heights. You can adjust the mounting height on purpose, and here you see, you know, a 94 outside and 256 center, which was higher numbers in the center than what we just saw uh, without the lens alone. So 36%, not the ideal spread that we want, but I'm now at 13 inches, so I'm five inches higher than where I was before. All right, so spread-wise, uh, what would you like to see better? Whew, it's tough to say. Like, I, it's hard. Benefit. I can adjust it if I want to. Benefit, it's eight inches and I get you know 60% outside the center. Uh, nine. Yeah, okay, so nine. There is a couple of things that I would do better on this okay. thing, right? And so I don't think you can get better spread out of uh, like three quarter inch <laughs> lens, tiny. right? Yeah. I, I, I don't think that's possible. Yeah. So you'd have to redesign the lens if you want to do something different than that. But. I think they could actually offer more of these little guys, right? Mm. And so that 
uh, in right now it's designed to put out like a square pattern essentially you know it evenly in every direction oh yeah and we yep. see that with the the APA 9x this is nice right? round. it does a rectangle yeah yeah so some of you have rectangle tanks when I say rectangle I don't mean like a 120 where it's essentially two two foot 40 uh, breeders the you know mm -hmm. 36 inch long 18 inch front to back rectangle tanks 75 90 yep. 110 yep. you have a rectangular area like a two foot uh, by 18 inch that you're trying to cover. Mm. So it'd be really cool if you could get other lenses like this that would allow you to redistribute that light in a way that uh, you know is optimized for your tank so it's not spilling out of the tank and spreading it right. So in that spirit, I'm gonna give this like a, a eight that okay. there's room for improvement, okay. but considering the small form factor and what they've done here, really, really awesome. Yep, okay. Nine and an eight, Adam. All right. Move. So next we talk about spectrum, and like we said, I mean, right, look at this. It. That's it. That is the ATI T5 over the top of the Kessel spectrum, and it not only covers it, but it kind of exceeds it in some places. Yeah. Okay. So this is the uh, uh, we don't need to talk about it anymore. This is one of the <laughs> only ones that match this standard uh, A game. Uh, Kessel, and so again, actually, that is one of the uh, uh, one of the things here is when you're working with an optics company and they're dealing with uh, like learning how to grow plants and uh, coral and mm -hmm. everything. They know how to adjust uh, all of the stuff properly, and so that's the net result. And you're going to see a lot of them that do not look like that, and they're very peaky and they're not blended right. Uh, so let's see what it looks like when you put all those under a single lens and then you look at them underneath the, the light. Okay, so there is some shift here in weight in that deeper blue and like that uh, near UV range, but I would say that this is one of the better performances from an LED, specifically because you said they're all under one, they're all under one lens. And there there's hardly a shift here. No reds peaking, greens peaking, weird things. There's little bits of shift within the blue. This isn't perfect, but it is going to be next to the T5s and maybe one other option. Yeah. A top performer by by far. For sure. Yeah. I mean, especially after <laughs> the one you just saw. So, like, this is it was great. So, spectrum wise, uh, what would you like to see better? Uh, I mean, this one is tough to say that they need to improve on because, you know, in some instances, like, they are, you know, becoming or matched the gold standard that we aim for. We aim for that 400 to 500 range. They've hit it. They've also hit it in a way that adds more on some, on the, like, the near UV range. And, um, and it, you know, we'll talk about control next, but uh, I can adjust some of that as well. So, uh, man, am I going to give a 10 to the Spectrum, to the Kessel? Yes. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'm going to give it an 8.5. Okay. Uh, oh, I would okay. like the ability to peak that 450 if I want. Oh, uh, right? oh I see what you're saying. I yep. like the ability to okay. peak it up there in that fluorescent area if I want to. Give me that ability. So what we're saying is like that color knob. When you adjust the color knob, you know, you can get more blue or you can get a less blue, and, you know, it adds in more white. But uh, as I'm playing around with the violet and the red and the green, and I only have one control for that amount of blue, and that does that means like, what if I want a wider tank, but I want to peg that 455? I, that option would be nice. Yeah, it would be. All right, so control. This one's actually interesting. Uh, so how do you control the Kessel? Uh, again, on board, you know, if you want just the blue color channel, and I call it the blue color channel because it's like, it's that Kessel logic, you know, so anywhere on that knob that I turn this thing and I walk away, like, it will grow coral. It will not be detrimental to my tank. Uh, like, people have grown coral in all of the uh, ratios of that. So uh, it's smart. And I don't have to have a controller. I don't have to have an app. I don't have to get a Wi-Fi dongle if I don't want to. But I can. And then I can access, like, the violet and the red and the green and things like that. So these other additional channels. So. You get the spectral controller, you know, plug it in there, and you actually have something at the tank that you can you know, touch. Get the Wi-Fi dongle, and I can work it from my phone. Uh, otherwise, I can plug it in and get the blue. All right. I'm going to just jump to my rating here. Okay. I'm going to give it a five. Oh. Right. And this is why. Uh, there's a couple of reasons I'm, I'm pretty dissatisfied yeah. with it. So actually, one of my favorite things about it is these little knobs, because I love the ability to just walk up, 
boom, done. Looks Spectrum good. handled, right? <laughs> Looks good. Uh, and intensity, they are one of the ones that didn't get lost in the par wars and they got better, uh, spent more time about the distribution and quality of light than yeah. they were trying just pure horsepower. Yep. And I think they achieved that uh, mission. Uh, but like you can't like cook your corals with this thing. You can't like it'd be really difficult to walk up and hit it with a thousand par because True. you nobody would mount it close enough to do to that by accident. Yeah. And before we did all these investigates, most people didn't even know like the height or any of these lights were designed for. So you could really easily hit it with a thousand par. That one's gonna be difficult to do with this thing. And so it's about using multiples to achieve the goal in the right. same way you would use most modules. Uh, and here's the part that I'm most dissatisfied with is there's a red channel, a green channel, and a UV channel in yep. here that are handicapped. You can't access them unless you buy their spectral controller little module right. or you buy the Wi-Fi thing. Well, and it was, it was that addition of 100% violet that where we saw that blue band, not only just the violet start to uh, come in and that near UV, we actually saw the blue band widen out like this. And okay. so not having access to that straight out of the gate, I can see your point. So especially if it's going to be one of the most expensive options out there, True. Per, per par, yep. rather. And so, and for me, it's totally unnecessary. They could have blended in with their Kessel Logic, blended in the green, the UV, and the red, and I could just change it with the color knob, and I don't have to have, I don't personally need access to like exactly where it is. Mm -hmm. They can pick for me because they have done this before, and it's a really good option for somebody who doesn't want to learn every last thing about Spectrum. Now that said, most people are gonna buy the dongle anyway, or the True. Spectral controller, yep. so maybe case. I'm just harping on nothing, because you're gonna want the phone app. If you spend this kind of money on this thing, who doesn't want the phone app? Yep. Uh, and then also, through the phone app, if, if I was just gonna set this up this way with the knobs, I'd have to just put it on a timer, like my Apex that's or true. whatever. Yeah. Most people are gonna want the dust to dawn effects, and that's all accessible via the spectral controller here. Uh, so that's like a, a little controller, controller yep. you mount magnetically to your stand. And then there's also a Wi-Fi version. Yeah, I don't have the app uh, here. We were in a crunch to get it, so I didn't have the uh, the app. But the app is is um, you know basic basically the same types of controls. You have the color, the intensity, the violet, green and red. So I'm not. You gave them a five. I'm not going to harp on them as hard because you know it would be interesting to see that uh, you know down the road that Apex control is like looks like it's on the horizon. Mm. So if they were to implement you know, those additional color channels into that, and I already have an Apex anyway, uh, and I can control this thing in there, uh, I'm not, I don't have to buy the Wi-Fi dongle, I don't have to buy the special controller, I have the Apex, then all I need to buy is this, and I can, if, if they have, okay, so conditionally, I give them a 6.7 if under the, uh, under the notion that that access to those channels are in the uh, an Apex control. If not, the come back to this video, I'll give them a six. The Apex control goes through, and it is, it's on the cusp of coming out, yep. I've heard. Uh, and it is uh, gonna go through the Wi-Fi dongle, and you'll, you'll ah, almost certainly okay. have well, access to oh, it. Oh, it's the yeah, iota, I imagine. Okay, yep. so then you would have access to it. So mm -hmm. I'm not gonna be as hard uh, because, you know, you can plug this thing in and not get it wrong. So 6.7. Raise your hand if you like the product that you bought to be handicapped out of the box and not have all the functions <laughs> unless you buy more stuff. I don't. Got I just said that about the Orphan. Nobody, yeah. right? Okay. So yeah, I'm gonna give that, I think I said five. Yes, you said five. Okay, right Stick on. with the five. Uh, all right, so uh, mounting option. This is actually one of the places where this really shines for me too. Okay, there's multiple mounting options. Like this has some, some of the most comprehensive mounting options. So you see here, there's a gooseneck. These things are adjustable, but you can also see here that if you have more than one light, it's really kind of hard to get these things level and even. Like you can see the one, the one on the right's a little canted. Cords. Yeah, and then the cords you have to like tape or you know Velcro or tape up to the thing. So this is actually my old tank and their old design of the 360 cans, which are uh, thicker. But like, yeah, I. I really like the goosenecks because they were so yeah. easy to install, but they're so hard to get all three of them identical and all the cords all over them. I don't even know why they sell this thing anymore because there's a way better option. Yeah, so if we go to the jump to the it mounted on the tank, uh, that live shot that we had here, uh, this is the A series arm. Uh, mm -hmm. And I mean, it looks like, so the cords actually travel through the tube. 
Yeah, there's the one cord there for some reason that isn't in there. You can see on the one farthest one, they just go through they the They travel tube. through the tube. So I, it extends out and in, so I can adjust you know, the front to back depth. I can add that 90 degree, you see they're hanging from this 90 degree adapter, I can add that in. Uh, the actual arm is adjustable up and down and has graduation marks on the back of it, so I can uh, dial in my height. Eight inches is kind of where we su suggest. Uh, and this new thing that I saw, we saw today, oh, I saw today. I yeah, I'd never seen this before. I haven't been keeping up, but look at this. You can like actually angle these things and then lock it in. I think it's cool. I knew this thing existed, yeah. but I never have used it. No. Uh, and I just totally forgot about it as an option. So the ability to actually aim the light uh, and shine it at things you want. You know, I could see a use for this like under a hood or under a canopy. Like if I could not mount these lights far away from the edges and I found a way to mount this thing, I could point those outer ones like out towards the edges or in towards the center or something like that. Very useful. Of course, you can also hang it. They have little uh, like elbows right here that go in and yeah. you can, can hang it. And a center hook, yep. Yep, oh, and a center hook that yep. screws into the bottom in the middle there. So you can also hang it if you like. There's all kinds of options. So this is actually one of the things that I've seen so far with some of the more market dominant uh, players is they have money to invest in uh, making proper mounts for it, mm. right? Yep. A lot of people end up using other people's mounts. Uh, <laughs> but like if you... Uh, are selling a market dominant product, you can actually make it so it actually functions and works the way that people like. Right. And so the fact that you can put all the cords through the tube uh, and hide them, and I think we could have done actually a better job than we saw in the, mm. in the video, because yep. you can make them almost invisible yes, in there. that's true. It goes down the tube, there's only one tube that comes over, totally out of the way, Clean. really awesome. And they all hold a 90 degree angle perfectly, so they all sit this, uh, this same if you have multiple they look lights. Identical. You can put three on there, it and looks it's perfect. no problem. Yep. Okay. Uh, all right, so mounting options for me, I'm going to give it a 10. Okay. Uh, I will dock it a half a point to 9.5. It does have the most extensive mounting options in the, some of the lights out there, but those if you wanted to hang it like we did in, the, in this hood of the 160 and you use those thin little uh, you know, hooks to hang it, they are a bit flimsy. They seem a bit weak. I don't, I don't, they haven't failed this here before. It's just not an option that I, 9.5. 9.75. Okay. All right. He uh, went down to 9.7. <laughs> Good luck, Adam. <laughs> All right. It's true. Okay. Uh, okay. Aesthetic appeal. Uh, again, the only reason we own these things make it look make the tank look nice. Uh, so, what do we like about it? Uh, okay. So, form factor, super super small footprint light. I mean, we're talking like the only other lights like this is like AI Prime, you know, size wise, and this actually, you know. Yeah, I believe if you put them head to head, you'll see like a higher par output from here. Um, but small footprint wise, aesthetically on the outside, if you're looking at you know the tank it mounted to here, this is a single light solid option, even, uh, even nicer when you have multiples. So outside the tank, I like the look. Inside the tank, this is one of those arguable points that Kessel has the best shimmer out there. Uh, I mean, when you've seen, like you said, uh, we've seen almost every single light and the shimmer that they offer. This is uh, this is a bit ab ab abrasive to me. Like this is really shimmery. So what this is is you saw that little staticky one we saw before. We saw no shimmer. Right. Right. And so what we see is a single point of light here that's really bright refracting and creating a lot of shimmer. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people will say this is pretty heavy, uh, but and this actually is dependent a lot on how much surface tension you're, uh, you're creating. So if you want to just aim the pumps away a little bit, all of a sudden it dulls. Mute it down a bit. But it creates actual shimmer, not static, not disco, not uh, like uh, undesirable effects. It just creates big caustic lines. Yeah, mm -hmm. shimmer. Yeah. Right. Yep. Now I always like to mute it with T5s, and I'm actually going to mute it with LEDs in the future here. Mm -hmm. But uh, it creates actual shimmer, and what you won't see is you won't see a single red, green, or any other color shooting around the tank. That's right. Because the spectrum is blended. So say what you want one way or the other. Everybody has a favorite flavor. Uh, it's a heavy shimmer, but it is actual shimmer. Yes. Okay. So if you were going to improve on this aesthetic appeal, what would you do? 
Is there a way to improve on this aesthetic? If I was in a Struda, uh, I would give access to, I mean, if you go back to this thing, the color is actually really sharp. But I would give access to peak the 450 a little bit if okay. I wanted to, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, I don't think, they have a little diffuser for the old one. So the diffuser will actually decrease the amount of shimmer. Uh, so maybe bring back the diffuser uh, for oh, this, but yeah. you're gonna mm -hmm. reduce the par along with it. So I, I, a lot of people didn't like that, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if aesthetically, like the only thing I could improve here is I am not a big fan of the giant caustic lines. I do like to, you know, the surface area. And uh, so I would see these regardless. So I would supplement it with something. Uh, if uh, I'm gonna give it a, 8.7. 8.7. Outside the tank looks good. Inside the tank looks good. 8.7. This thing grows corals. But mm. it looks, to me, it looks better when it's supplemented with something. So I got to dock it a little on bit. On its own. Yes, on its own. Oh, man, I love it on the outside of the tank. I like the color in it. It produces awesome corals, which is a super important component. And so yes. corals are healthy and lush. Nothing looks better it's than healthy corals. part of the aesthetic appeal. Because the thing is designed properly mm -hmm. and it's easy to use, people will produce it. But on its own, I gotta admit, the shimmer is a little heavy. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna have to adjust for that with uh, bringing the light down. I'm gonna give it an eight. Okay. All right. All right. Straight so up. So, where would you use this thing? Well, he tallies up the uh, the numbers here. This was a funny. This was an interesting conversation because we we're we we're talking. Okay, so we're talking castle. Where would you use this thing? Well, let's just list the place that we, the places that we are using it. This tank right here behind us has five of them. Your tanks in the office that you saw in that shot. It's a good example. Each has one. Muted, yeah, that. yeah. The T five in here with the castle you can see. But uh, so we are using these, and we're using them. Um, you know. In those, in your tanks where one will suffice, uh, it, we're using a single one. We're supplementing them with T5s on like the E170 because to get that extra uh, par oomph. So, you know, in a 24 inch by 24 inch area, a single one LPS light all the way, now, nonstop. Like you can see Ryan's uh, ULM you know, LPS tank in his office, softy tank all the way. Uh, SPS probably would have to supplement it with something like T5s. Uh, but when you start to stack multiples together, like we did on that four foot tank, when you, when you add four, five units and you start implementing these things together, they will hit those SPS dominated num uh, numbers without supplementing, in which case, you know, uh, I would use multiples in that type of scenario. All right, I'm gonna ask you, and you're probably not gonna guess, because I haven't brought this up. Okay. But what does this little lens look the most like in terms of all other light sources that we use that aren't LEDs? Mm, yeah, interesting. Like the sun? It's like the little bulb inside of a halide. Oh, okay. Right? I'm using so, Adam's back here going like this. That means halide. So That's true. Historically, yeah. single the, point of light. The gold standard has always been it was super halide small. combined with T5s. Yeah. Single point of super bright light. Yeah supplemented with diffused light, right? And I've seen halide tanks, by the way, that look really heavy shimmer like this one. Yeah, For the true. same reason, right? Because it has mm. a single point of super bright light. I think that's what sold a lot of hal halide crossovers from halides to this was the extensive shimmer that you got from that single bulb with these giant reflectors that kind of bounce the, fl the light all over the place. Uh, they essentially, uh, you could almost say that they made like a halide light in a little tiny form factor. It's the closest, right? <laughs> and so here's the thing, is uh, I personally like that look to the point where I'm addicted to it. Because I know what I like personally, and what I like is heavy shimmer that is muted with uh, diffused light, like halides mixed with uh, T5s, mm. and nothing that I have come across comes close to a single point of light providing very sharp shimmer mm. muted with diffused light. Mm. So I would use this a lot in an environment where I just wanna throw a light on and be successful, like a LPS tank and yep. those two foot cubes, and it's out of the way. I don't have to worry about getting in and out of it. It's low profile, doesn't look ugly in there. Mm. And then, I don't really produce a lot of those tanks anymore. I'm really looking for kind of like more epic lines. Yep. Like I'm kind of, you know, scaling up the top. Yep. Now for me, 
I use these uh, in the tanks in my office, mixed with T5s, I use it here with T5s, and then at home now, what I'm actually going to do is, instead of supplementing with T5s, I'm going to supplement it with the Reef Brights. You can go watch the whole video on why we came to that conclusion, but the Reef Brights actually have mm. a wider spread than a T5 bulb, mm. and uh, allow me to add that peak 450 uh, range yeah, in there true. if I want to, and so that, wide strip of uh, LEDs creates that kind of softer, you know, shimmer that is going to diffuse these. We saw it, we, when I saw it on the E170 the other day when we did the video, I'm like, man, I want that <laughs> It was really home. awesome. Like, it, that is the nicest I've ever seen that tank. The shimmer is exactly what I want. Yeah. I don't have to mess around with cleaning reflectors. I don't have to mess around with changing out bulbs. This is for me. Right, so yeah. that is when I would use this thing. I'd use it anytime I want to mix it with any other type of diffused lighting. And a lot of people think of diffused lighting only as T5s, but it's not. LEDs. It's the quality of light, yep. and you can use LEDs, uh, and uh, in this case, the XHOs for me. Uh, so that is when I'd use this. Adam, what do we got? 43 and a half. 43, 43 and a half. And a half. So All we right. just almost jumped 10 points there, it sounds like. All right, awesome. current, current so number current one. Current winner, I, you know, current number one. Because of its price, I don't know if you'll stay up at the top yet. We'll see. But uh, got, we'll see. And we got one more for today. All and right. then we got 15 others. 15 so others. We're going right. to do four episodes. But up next here. Hopefully you guys appreciate being able to hear our the actual real thoughts, thoughts as this stuff comes together. And, get, and how it compares to each other, actually. And how we would actually use them. Because uh, just listening to like a product highlight or listening to uh, like uh, investigates where it's not really related to anything, yeah, it's yeah. hard to put all the pieces together. So I uh, hope you guys appreciate there it. There you go. All right, up next, this big boy right here. All right, so this one actually may be going a little faster because we've said most of the things about uh, this one. But cost per par, what is it? Uh, so we've got a 402 average par because of a lot. This puts out so much. At a thousand one hundred bucks for this thing, 274. So we haven't broke that 250 mark yet. Um, but I mean, you're getting a ton of par for that cost, and that's why that cost per par really starts to come down. Mm -hmm. So 274, fifth most expensive uh, per par light that we sell. Giving uh, it a 2.5. Yep. Adam. 2.5 from both of us. Uh, you can tell that we're just scaling it up 0.5 until we get to the top. Uh, there will <laughs> yeah. be a 10 in that, in that there mark. There will be a 10. Lowest cost per par, I can't wait. Yeah. Uh, all right, so in this case, actually, will you go back? Okay, we're gonna do the spread thing. Yeah. You can actually see here, you know, this is a light that kind of looks like a bank of T5s. I mean, in form factor. I mean, this is almost the same exact size as that. Yeah, form yeah. factor ain't that much different than Look this. At that. And you'd probably say, oh, well, maybe it would be the same. It's not. Yeah. Uh, so, like, this light needed to be pretty close to the water to perform properly. Uh, but but this one actually still is designed to be mounted pretty high. So if you look at six inches there, uh, you know, 800 in the center, yeah. and then it kind of scales out to 233. Not that actually that bad for no, being six inches up the water. A 400 par drop from, you know, eight, however many was it, 16 inches from the center from mm -hmm. one point out to the edges. So uh, that is just, what you're looking at here is an indication this thing was designed to go up to like 15 inches, which is exactly where we found it's, uh, it's optimal mounting height, where it spread the par out the best, and light efficiency, 44%. So not as high, but kind of in some of that same range. That uh, same range as the, uh, the smaller version. Uh, you'll see a lot of lights throughout this four-part series that are kind of in that 40% some range. Yeah, so this is a super awesome, if you're looking for SPS in a like two-foot two cube or like that kind of versions as you scale up larger, mm. uh, that coverage area, uh, an awesome light. So uh, in term, terms of spread, uh, I'm going to give this one, uh, I don't know, man, a lot, I guess I... I I would use this on a two foot cube for an SPS tank. So I'll give it an eight and a half. Yeah, so. No, I'm gonna go eight. Okay, so spread wise, we, you know, we tested it in that two foot cube. We put two on a four foot, uh, four foot by two foot uh, tank. So uh, I, was a, I was a little, you know, I wanted a little more front to back, uh, you mm -hmm. know, spread. And at 15 inches, Seven you and still half. kind well, of. You're talking me down. I mean, at 15, you know, 15 inches off, you would still expect to see some of that light uh, go to the front and back. So. Uh, for the price that I paid for this, uh, over a two foot by two foot cube, like I'm, if I, I probably have some like high end SPS in there if I'm going to spend that kind of money on that size. But uh, you go look at Sean's tank, two thousand gallon tank, and I mean, if, if 
that's what you're looking for, like the, the a panel of sky. That's what he uses. He uses this to achieve that. So cost not an op- not as much of an option in there. Uh, so for the best uh, spread wise, mm, if a single fixture, one of these seven point six. No, we won't hire me. All right. So here's the thing. Actually, as I was thinking about it, I'm gonna take it down. Okay. But I also got to give the challenge to if you're going to mount them this high. Yes, it's kind of the reality. You're not gonna get that much better than this. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if you need a solution for that. It's not going to be the same as the ones you can mount super close and like fill out a two right. foot area without getting any spill in the room. Right. So, I don't know, for the range, I'm going back up to eight, considering <laughs> oh, where it's at. Uh, just poor, all over the place. Poor Adam over there. Red pen all over uh, that. He's okay. at an eight. I'm going to All right. So, uh, spread wise. All right. So, so, the spectrum thing, we're going to look at it again. It's a little different because there's a little different grid of LEDs. It's shifted over a, a little bit. There's that, you know, a little valley right down there in like the 430 range uh, compared to the T5 bulb. But, yep. you know, still pretty wide. I would have preferred this peak would be about five or seven or so nanometers to the, the left, left right? Yeah. Uh, if they did that, I would be a little happier. But you can see it offers the full spectrum down below, right? So uh, these are kind of hard to describe, but this is, it has the full spectrum offering because it's filling in that full space. It just has the most at that specific peak. Yeah, true. You know, you know, another point that we didn't really talk about here as far as that price per par, uh, that's price per par with this thing set at max. Mm. So, you yep. know, in that case, like six inches, all of that light's going, all of the light, almost all the light's going inside that 24 by 24 inch area. But then when you think about it, like you raise it up to 15 inches, I'm actually going to dial some of that back. Not as much using the Orphix, like you saw, all channels were 100% except for the whites that were like down to about 24. Uh, so I'm not losing a ton, uh, but there is some, you know, par drop in that. All right. So, uh, in terms of that, what are you going to rate it? So, you know, spectrum-wise... Oh, uh, we didn't do the, the blending thing. I'll oh, show you no, hit it real let's quick. Sh- show the blending. So, not, not all it's surprising uh, that you're going to see Similar it change compact. quite a bit around. And that's the net effect of having all those lenses uh, and reflecting off the surface of the water. Yep. Yeah. All right, so dynamic, like we did the compact. And this one, you know, like you said, you know, a little more shift of the blue to the left. Uh, 5.8. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I said five in the last one. Mm. I'm gonna stick to it. Okay, uh, you know, okay. I think the same thing, man. A good, really good offering. I wish it was blended better. Yep. And how you blend it matters to me. I agree. If it doesn't, then for you, maybe you can dick it up a couple. Yeah, but there you go. All right, so control, uh, the same thing. What do we rate it for control? Because it's the exact same control options. I think I rated that one pretty low uh, because I, I'm forced into a control option. Adam? There isn't. What was I? Wh- I was at a 3.5 3. on the comp. Four. All right. I'm going to go with the same I'm thing. I'm sticking to that because yeah. it's the same, exact same thing for control. And mounting options, what do we say? I hate to say this because uh, this is the exact same thing here, except I'm going to dock it half a uh, point for a reason. Yep. All right, Ryan, you're at 6.5. 6.5 for mounting. I was at an 8.5 for mounting options. I'm going I'm down half, a 5 because uh, this thing is pretty heavy to be using that uh, that yeah. mount, uh, hang-on mm-hmm. bracket yeah. on the side. It makes me a little nervous. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to bring this one down to a 6 because of that same reason. Like, I... Th- the, with the with the legs on the edge of my rimless tank on glass, like I am kind of con- concerned about the weight. Now, I'm not saying that it hasn't, like especially three quarter inch glass, probably fine. Uh, I'm just not gonna do it. I'd end up hanging it, so it reduces the mounting option for me. All right, okay. aesthetic appeal. Let's pull it up. This is actually somewhere I think it shines. The fact that it is the same width as the tank that it's over mm-hmm. makes it nice. The fact that those lenses focus the light in the tank and not on the wall and on the sides uh, actually makes it look nice. Again, nice, yeah. Uh, That little halo from the acrylic, I think it looks nice. I think this is one where with two of these, they're almost, you know, these are almost 24 inches long right underneath, in which case when we put two of them over a four foot tank, Though side by side with them touching, it, it actually looks really cool. It looks awesome. I thought, I thought it was when an you awesome mount them, it, especially if you, you do a unique mounting system that makes them super level. So, and because I've seen Sean's tank and how these can be implemented as a sky, uh, I also think that's pretty awesome. So, you know, outside the tank, uh, this gets some high marks for me. Uh, it looks pretty good. If you put it in a hood like Sean, like, uh, Sean did, that was pretty cool. Inside the tank, uh, I think we're back to kind of where we were for the compact. Uh, it's similar kind of hashy style shimmer. Shimmers like a fuzz. You're probably yeah, you're probably seeing a color color separation here and there in the shadows. So 
Yeah, aesthetic appeal. I mean, this tank looks pretty awesome, and it, they look good at 100% all channels. I dial back the whites a little bit. Um, 6.7. Seven and a half. Okay. All right. So <laughs> when would you use this light? Uh, that if, if you were going to spend this money on a 24 by 24 inch cube, solid SPS dominated you know, option because it'll hit those par numbers and it looks pretty cool too. Uh, just mount it 15 inches off the top. Uh, I do like two of these over a four foot tank and you know, progressively just get bigger from then on. So um, Again, uh, like the compact, I need a high mounting height. I want to not have it spill on the side of my walls uh, and not into my eyes if I don't have an option to put it under a hood like Sean did. Um, so this has double, if not more, the output of that. So I would use it in situations where I want higher par like SPS. SPS dominant, wall to wall. Yeah, I mean, when money is no object and I want it mounted high, like just blanket the tank in light. Mm. Uh, and again, I mean, Sean's take just keeps coming to mind. <laughs> it's, but yeah, It's a uh, good example of that. Yeah, and so that is an option on a four foot 120, two of these, three of them on a 160. And actually at 1100 bucks, if you look at like a lot of the other options when you need like three or four of them to achieve the same thing, kind of right it, it actually isn't that much more expensive, especially because this is one of the few lights where you can actually run all channels at 100%. So some of these other lights that you're gonna see are gonna look lower cost per par, but I'm gonna take half the channels that are white and turn them down to 30%. Yeah. So effectively, not really. Yeah, uh, unless you just like a tank that looks like a summer pond. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. So uh, that was actually one of my biggest pet peeves, peeves with lights is that a lot of people add all these unnecessary whites in there knowing Just full well you're down. never going to use them. Yeah. So yeah. like either don't put them in there and don't charge me for them or put the blue more blues in there. I, I don't know, do something then other than put useless stuff in and there. And there's options out there that do that. Exactly yeah. that because they recognize that problem. So the fact that these guys have designed it to have a perfect spectrum, designed it intelligently to be mounted high for people who want it mounted high. Again, if you see this, uh, can you pull up the tank above uh, above it, it looks really nice. You can see how you could pull out the entire aquascape without ever taking the moving the light. Yeah, doesn't matter what I need to do this tank. Yep. the light will never need to come Very out of the true. way. Very true. So uh, an attractive option, I think, for a lot of people, and that's where I'd use it. All right, Adam. Thirty-two and a half. Thirty-two. So and a what half. does that make it? Is that is that number one? No, 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 no. 44 was oh. uh, number one. That was a castle. Oh, 44 is number one. Yeah, so in, right. in, the, in the middle. So that was the five, that was five of the 20 lights. All right, so we got 15 more of these guys to come, actually. <laughs> so uh, hopefully you just enjoy, again, like the whole aspect. And so what you're going to see is the five next in rank of price per par yep. as we work towards number one, the cheapest par per light like we've done. It's a surprise. Uh, I, I think... There's a bunch of these There's that are actually big surprises. surprises in here. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. Uh, thanks for joining us, and hopefully we'll uh, see all of it. If you want to see, I don't know, man. Uh, what what like see some of these? Uh, I can. We can. If you want to see the the in depth, you know, we can send them to the uh, investigates playlist. If some of these lights tickled your fancy. Actually, you know what? Just because I spent so much time talking about okay. it, if you want to see the episode where we came to the conclusion that. This light coupled with the reef brights oh, is yep, why true. I'm going to do that in my own tank. That live you can stream. check it out right, right here. There. You'll be able to find that episode. Find out why reef brights uh, as a diffuse light mixed with this is what I'm going to call as close Solid to choice. the T5 uh, halide solution the that we've had before. The platinum standard. Yeah, oh, we decided maybe. platinum is actually is lower, than gold, lower than gold, depending on how you value <laughs> Go it. Go check but it out, though. See it over here, and uh, we'll see you guys next Tuesday with episode two of the Reef Light Showdown. See ya.